Welcome back, guys, to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Well, last episode, after learning about Weapon Awakening, we got ready for more proud quests. Our final difficulty tier, taking on a grounded trial, stormy trial, and then frigid trial against elemental dragons before the worst vacation ever and trade barriers saw us face free foes at the same time. A new member of our ever-growing roster now bores the ship. So, silly little cut. <laughs> Let me use one of my remaining free cards, which I will buy a gold Dahlia thing card by the time we're nearer the end of our thing. I think we're going to go with Vasaraga because we've got the partner, which I'm playing with all the time, Zeta, and I have managed to already get the guy's sigil. A Dolaf warrior who hunts primal beasts for the society. Contractor to the seal weapon known as the Great Scythe Grunov, he uses an incredible strength and unyielding spirit to overwhelm his foes. Sorry I'm late. Bateau. So I do have his stuff. So let's go equip at least that sigil at the moment. I could probably just give him some random stuff at the moment, you know how it is. But I do have it. It is at the bottom of this list, uh, which we have to get quite through quite a lot to get there, to be perfectly fair. Should have gone from the top. I should have just pressed up. That would have made more sense, wouldn't it? I think it would have. But Ebony's Awakening. That's yours. Extends the time before the Grinoff gauge starts depleting. And shortens Vasaraga's skill cooldowns whenever he lands a charged triangle attack. Effect strength is based on the attack. Alright then. A quest counter. Show me. Hello. The fate voice by Procedi. Okay. <laughs> Dolat Furio hunts primal beast for the society. He gives the impression of being a terrifying monster, but he's a calm soul who kindly extends a hand to the weak. Let's enjoy the story. Prologue, the real mistake. Foul smell fills the air as my dissolving limbs grow black. Protect the captain! Get him somewhere safe! No, leave me. Run. As long as you're alive, we can rebuild. We promised... Didn't we? Our lives are in your hands. You're not allowed to make the sacrifice for me. Please, save yourselves. I'll never forget the memory of that day. My conceit put us in that mess, but I was the only one who made it. After all the good times we shared, after all the pain, they would have to live on in my memory. Once I could pick myself back up again, I began to temper my body. I swore I'd never let the same tragedy repeat itself. It wasn't long before this husk became resilient, augmented and conditioned to withstand even lightning. I no longer felt physical pain, or much of anything at all. It was preferable that way. I could be a shield to protect others, to protect them from the same tragedy that befell my crew. Having lost my place in the world, I found a home in the society and quickly became contractor to the seal weapon, Great Scythe Grinoth. My missions were simple, hunt primal beasts or exterminate the foe. I did my job so that I could keep people safe, to aid them in their time of need. But despite my best efforts, I still failed. I was powerless when Vern was kidnapped right in front of me. Worst of all, I could do nothing but watch as our hopeful new recruit was cut down. What good was I when I couldn't even protect a single one of my comrades? <sighs> Maybe the real mistake was believing I could do good in the first place. I'll just have to imagine he's twirling his mustache and has a monocle in at all times while those lines are red. 
Inescapable Pain, Episode 1. I joined the Society to protect others, which sounds noble on paper. But in reality, it was all for my own sake. I'm the reason that my old crew, my family, found an early grave. It was only right that I spend the rest of my meager life in atonement. At least, that's the excuse I told myself. In truth, another part of me was deluded into thinking I could free myself from the guilt, but only if I could change into another person. Turns out that being immune to physical torture does nothing to protect your heart from psychological torment. Speaking of mental suffering, not long after I joined the Society, Ilsa assigned Zeta as my partner. The old me would have worked with her just fine, but too much had changed. Her blunt honesty rubbed me the wrong way. A man can only take so much random commentary before he goes insane. Even Ilsa called her pupper, which was kinder than what I had in mind back in those days. But it was an apt name, considering all of her barking. I didn't care about forging a real partnership with Zeta. Every time we had a mission together, I just wanted to finish it as fast as possible. But it backfired. Whenever I pushed her away, she pushed back ten times harder. She was determined to know me. I would have never admitted it out loud, but I was afraid. After all, the closer you are with someone, the harder it is to cope with their loss. How many people have I made insane with random commentary? Episode 2, One Blunt Partner. As for why I joined the captain's crew, well, I had my reasons. The captain's father was awaiting our crew in Estelucia, and that meant duking it out with primals and gathering sky map pieces along the way. The captain was strong and humble, had a knack for overcoming hardship. With leadership like that, I knew this crew could actually make it. That's not to say they were running a flawless operation. The way I saw it, they had two big problems. Vern and Lyria, the Red Dragon and the Girl in Blue. It's true they were core members of the crew, but they possessed powers which could represent grave consequences for the skies. Should one overflow with astral energy, or the other absorb enough primal power, they would be erased and herald the destruction of everything as we know it. It was possible the captain could reach Estelucia without any sacrifices, but I wasn't the type to bet on fate. These kids needed a shield. This body of mine would protect them all, no matter what came to pass. At least, that's what I intended. During the fight against the Moon Dwellers, I lost myself to the Atomagod Grinoth's power and raised my scythe against the crew. As pathetic as it was, I became the very threat I swore to protect them from. That was why I prepared a way to stop my own heart. I wouldn't hurt my comrades again. If I couldn't protect anyone, then the least I could do was make sure I could do no more harm. What are you playing at, Vasaraga? Is this your penance after what happened to Lester? I was fine with sacrificing myself as long as I could save someone else. A part of me even believed I deserved such a fate. I... I hate when you act alone. You could have come to me for help first, you know? We're partners, damn it! I couldn't feel pain, but... somewhere inside I felt like a wound had split me in two. It took me far too long to realize that it hurt my comrades to see me suffering that I had chosen to run instead of face my fears. Did you hear me, you big lug? You're not gonna drop dead on us. Not on my watch. My partner's instincts were sharp enough to cut right through me. But it was her words, honest and blunt, 
which shattered the walls around my cowardly heart. The pain I should have dealt with a long time ago came spilling out, but this time it was accompanied by a burning desire. We're going to survive this together. And that's the way it's been ever since. That left me with a lot of questions, mainly about Vern, to be fair. <laughs> feel like I need a chapter for just Vern. I feel like nothing was really explained about Vern during the course of this game. Episode 3, Stroll Through the Woods. Early in the morning, before the crew was to head out for a request, I headed to the forest surrounding Folka to conduct a test on Grinoth. On the way, I was stopped by the sight of a young girl watering the vegetable garden by her home, the wet plants sparkling beneath the morning sun. But something felt off about the scene. In contrast to the bright garden, a dark, foul mist seemed to surround the girl. Upon noticing me, she scrambled back into her house. The miasma clung to her as she fled. Sorry, lass. Shouldn't have snuck up on you like that. But that odd mist looked too real to be an illusion, and yet it didn't seem to be doing any harm. I decided to keep an eye out. After all, Folka was bustling with the influx of refugees from Tempil, and there was no telling what could happen in strange times such as these. So, a boss fight for the woman who pines for death. He must play as Vassalaga and Vassalaga alone. Grinoth ripped through the silence of the forest. As I lowered the scythe, the quiet returned. It was a perfect place for tuning the weapon. At least, it would have been had I not sensed the presence of someone watching. Whoever it was, they had yet to strike, so I assumed they were no threat. Perhaps they were one of Folka's residents. I know you're there. State your business. Turning around, I saw the familiar face of the mist-shrouded girl. That black armor. Your big scythe. Her expression was blank, completely devoid of the cheer she had while watering her garden. Eventually, she spoke as tears welled in her eyes. I'm tired, Mr. Reaper. You can take me away now. The floodgates broke, a steady stream cascading down her cheeks. Mr. Reaper? What are you talking about? I only wanted to grow those little ones. But everything I do hurts them. They all rot away. All I do is cause pain. The girl hung her head and grew silent. It was obvious she had given up on life. It was a feeling I was all too familiar with. Once you've steeled yourself for death, you start thinking there's no other way out. But before I could console her, a monster appeared from the brush and leapt at the girl. I felled it in a single blow, but she gasped at the grisly sight. Fear appeared in her eyes. Good. If she could still fear death, then she wasn't too far gone. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm no reaper. Most I can manage is to bring you safely home. You'd rather not be monster kibble, right? I... Need to gather your thoughts? I get it. Life rarely gives us obvious choices. Okay. Keep close. Maybe it was just a trick of the light, but I saw a bit of life return to her gaze. I took a step back toward the village, ready to prove I was no reaper of the afterlife. Asaraga works for the Society, a group that hunts primal beasts. He's armed with a seal weapon named Great. Scythe Grinoth. Tfosi is the Grim Reaper Incarnate. 
That's why it combines square and triangle to create combos. Press triangle to grant the stout heart status effect to himself. I know how that works now. Vasilaga can charge his triangle attack following a square attack. Landing charge triangle attacks fills the Grinoff gauge, which grants various buffs once the gauge reaches certain levels. Time to go home. Should be this way. <sighs> He's a big guy. Melas unleashed. Oh, so I got to put the stout heart buff on me because of that? That didn't feel like an earthquake to me. And there's two <sighs> phases by the look of it. But stout heart is a base one. Path's blocked by a boulder. Weird. It wasn't here before. Hmm. Let's look around. I don't mean to look straight down. I just wanted to press forward. Because this is a battle arena. Someone's hungry. Stand back. I'll take care of it. Gage does not feel fast. They're going he nearly does free hits. Try and stop you me. I'm not worth risking your life for. I said I'd bring you home. Besides, I've faced worse than this before. And I've got stout heart, so I could just charge at him. I'm gonna go block this one already. Okay, I did block it, to be fair, but I was expecting to do something more than that. Is this build gauge? No. Slow. <laughs> we let him do his move and then we unleashed all ours. You actually defeated that huge beast by yourself. Good. You're not hurt. Now. What do we do about that boulder? I know another way back. It'll take longer, but... Fine by me. You take the lead. Hmm, can we actually spend the gauge once we've got past the point is the fort? The gauge builds slow. Oh, and it goes away if we're out of combat for a long time. on us. We're not alone. Might be more than one monster at this rate. Zombies! I got them. Oh man, Stale Heart's so good. <laughs> That's that. To go. Yeah. What is that? It's a Garrison oh, or a Scarmiglione. Like <laughs> I guess I'm no slouch with the sight. <laughs> Proceeding with caution. So. What's this whole obsession about? Now I've got defense up. I... You don't have to answer, but just remember, once you die, that's it. Don't be so hasty to throw your life away. You will know pain. Oh, I can charge it. How long can I charge it for? Then <laughs> might. <laughs> I've still heart. Doesn't matter. Not today. I'm assuming an attack buff might be the third buff?
Upon arriving at the girl's home, I was met by a shocking sight. The thriving garden I'd seen before was now gray and withered, its fruits and vegetables rotting away. How could all the life have been sucked from this place in such a short span of time? When I looked at the girl, she purposefully avoided my gaze. I decided against questioning her for the moment. Whatever's going on, I might be able to help. But we can talk about that later. You should rest. Okay. She took an unsteady step through the door of her home. As I watched her go, I felt eyes on the back of my head. But when I turned around, no one was to be found. Yeah, I doubt I imagined that. I spent a few moments scanning the perimeter, but soon found nothing of concern. I decided to call it a day. Boss fight, so that's a log by the look of it. I wouldn't be surprised if the next one is. Alright, The Weight of Life, Episode 5. Curious about the girl and her garden, I headed once more toward the forest on the outskirts of Folka. Um, I never had a chance to thank you for the other day. Though she was more lively than before, her spirit was clearly drained. I guess it feels wrong to call you Mr. Reaper now. The name's Vasaraga. The girl introduced herself as Irene. As she spoke, I noticed her wrist was wrapped in a bandage. I asked if she was injured, but this caused her to grimace. Oh, this? Uh, it's fine. I just, uh, cut myself is all. In a thinly veiled attempt to change the subject, Irene offered me some juice made from homegrown fruit. This is the least I can do to thank you. Do you want to drink some together? Apple. Not bad. We sat at her table and began to chat. She told me that she hailed from Grossgard, a small region near Seed Hollow. Having just moved to Folka, she was still a new face to the locals. Do you take care of the garden by yourself? Yes. Hmm. Tense. Holding in on herself like a withering flower, she became the complete opposite of the girl I watched happily watering her plants. But it was not her forlorn expression that gripped me. It was the mist. Ever her formless companion, a swirling miasma seemed just beyond her perception. There were far worse things in the skies than a little smoke, but I knew this was more than it seemed. Mind if I stop by again? I could visit between requests. I wanted to help her, but not out of a misguided sense of obligation. I just wanted to make sure she never forgot what it was like to smile. Episode 6, Irene's Nightmare. I guess Vasaraga is not long spoken, as his chapters aren't really that long either. Wow, um, these vegetables are very... unique. Yes, unique. I brought Vern and Lyria with me in hopes of lifting Irene's spirits. How do you make a tomato look like a shriveled bone? That's talent, I guess. Vern was, for better or worse, brutally honest. Now, who did that remind me of? Vern, don't be rude. It's fine, Lyria. He's not wrong. Though she had every right to be offended, Irene took the comment in stride. Our two most carefree members of the crew seemed to be rubbing off on her. Yes, it was the right call to bring them. I'm not the best at brightening the mood. So Vasaraga told us about your plan. You want them to grow big and healthy, but they keep withering, right? Yes. After a moment of silence, Lyria gave Irene a sympathetic smile, encouraging the girl to divulge her feelings. She began to perk up. <laughs> Guess Zeta was right. 
It really is easier to share your worries with someone closer to your age. Taking care of those little ones is my purpose in life. She went on to recount how she had always been a loner. From a young age, her only friends were the plants she cared for. Recently, she had discovered that she could hear her plants talk, though she had no idea how or why. But now, it's like my precious friends are fading away, one by one. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Not long after she had gained the ability to communicate with her cherished plants, they suddenly began to wither and die one after another. She could hear them wail in agony as they reached their end. It was no surprise that she soon reached her breaking point. A few are still alive, but I'm sure they'll join the others in no time. If this is all that's waiting for me in the future, then I would rather not live to see it. Watching the lives of your loved ones slip out of your fingers? I could relate to that. What was she supposed to do? Distance herself from her reason for living? Wasn't that as good as dying? I eyed the black mist. Look, there's gotta be a way to fix things. What? But I've tried everything. Squeezing her bandaged wrist, Irene looked up at me in confusion. I did my best to reassure her without betraying the worry gnawing at my mind. Remnants of Salvation is next. What happened here? I had stopped by Irene's garden after finishing our quest, only to find every single leaf and stem had turned black and rotted. It felt unnatural, like something had completely sucked the life from what should have been a thriving patch of greenery. Filled with dread, I rushed inside the house, but Irene was nowhere in sight. It was then that I noticed a letter on the floor. To the blasphemer who betrayed Avia, you should know that Lady Lilith wished to bathe the skies in destruction. Have you not yet realized that clinging to life is folly? That living is a sacrilege to all we preach? You have two choices before you. Watch as that forbidden implement spreads darkness to all those innocent folk living around you. Or return to Avia and repent. So Irene had ties to the Church of Avia, and they'd fitted her with some sort of cruel device. It reminded me of Lyria and the Mind Sealer. If they had hurt Irene like they hurt Lyria... Damn. Thought I'd finally dealt with this pain. But there I was, failing to protect yet another innocent life. Brooding on it for too long wasn't going to bring Irene back, so I left the house and scoured the town. Avia always had a flair for drama, but I detected no commotion in town. Which means, bastard snuck away in a ship. Knowing there were precious few minutes to trail them, I rushed to the port. Is it another boss fight? It's a horde fight versus tons of Avia people, I'm sure. And with our guys there, nothing stands a chance. The captain, who saw me rushing to the port, joined me in the chase. Sierra Carte, who was always in the right place at the right time, heard a rumor about an Aviath battleship sighting. We took after them immediately, driving the Grand Cipher as hard as we could to close the distance. Found you. After we crested a cloud bank, their ship came into view. In a contest of speed, a mere battleship was no match for the Grand Cipher. We soon pulled alongside our quarry and boarded their vessel. I assume you're the draft that's been stalking our new shaman? Let Irene go. I'm afraid that's out of the question. 
The tension in the air grew palpable. That device she wears incinerates life. For now, the dark flame only affects plants. But with a little more time, the shaman will consume all life in Zega Grande. Lady Lilith will have her salvation, one way or another. You call that salvation? Maybe these fools didn't understand Lilith's true goals. Or maybe they were just bending the truth to satisfy their own cruel desires. Regardless, they were hazards that needed to be taken care of. She shows remarkable compatibility with the Dark Flame. <laughs> we will use her to fulfill Lady Lilith's wishes once and for all. At the expense of Irene and this Skydom? Not on my watch. It's time someone put your schemes to rest. Grinoth, did you hear that? We've got work to do. Lend me your strength! Take them, Grinoth! I offer my life for Lady Lilith! Lady Lilith! These guys well, never know when to quit. There goes their lives. We stop them here! They're on your ships. They're my loot places. <laughs> There's no end to them! Rackham, can you pull up alongside them? We need to board and find Irene. Of course! No kid is getting kidnapped. A flower instantly. This this just instantly did damage. That is getting even more ridiculous, to be honest. Come if you dare. <laughs> Try and stop me. What do you think? Just shout them to death now. Step up. I'll you all <laughs> Oh, you blasphemous. Wreck them. Do it. I'm on it already. Come on, Grand Cypher. Hang in there. Happy if troops are just ridiculously good sources of loot. They give tons of coins. Damn it. Remake it? We have to repair this scrap right. again. I'll handle the rest. Let Irene go. The shaman shall be our salvation. No. Defend her to the end. A bloom for every season. Into my way. Looking good. We want more. That was awesome, Pico. Oh, I can't destroy the cannons. Four are coming. It's too late to beg for mercy now, outsiders. Our salvation will be as Lady Lilith foretold. You Give even know what yet. Irene wishes for? I. What? <laughs> <laughs> the has a there was a robot. What? <laughs> Okay. Outsiders. Mm. Was that is a little ridiculous? Did you come for me? You're safe now. Let's get you home. It's like I'm too slow to do anything. This illusion of slow is big. By the time we carried Irene back to the Grand Cipher, half of her body was shrouded in the dark mist. A sinister-looking device was clamped around her wrist, where the bandage had slipped off. I don't advise using force to break it. That would put Lyria's life in danger. I remembered what Roland said back on Mount Nagelith. Removing one of these implements by force could cost Irene her life, but there was no time to search for another method. Basaraka, I'm sorry. I've caused you trouble again. Irene weakly apologized, barely conscious. It's okay. You can break the bracelet. My life is in your hands. As long as you're alive, we can rebuild. We promised, didn't we? Our lives are in your hands. I clenched Grinoth tighter. Irene had already accepted her end, but I... I swore to protect them. I swore to protect them all! With my heartbeat thundering in my ears, I focused my entire being on the device. Grinoth and I became one as I swung down. We cut through the dark mist, and a burst of blinding light swallowed everything.
Hopefully, not literally. Hello. Episode 9, Fresh Verdure. After some time had passed, I stopped by Irene's home while out on a request. Well, well. A comforting and familiar sight greeted me. The garden was bursting with vegetation, much like the first time I saw it. Basaraka! Standing amidst the greenery, Irene waved at me with a smile. I should apologize. You can't hear your friends anymore because of what I did. She shook her head, her smile still present. No, I shouldn't have let the church tempt me like that. I'm sorry for dragging you and your crew into my mess. A hint of sorrow graced her features. I can't hear these little ones anymore, that's true. But I can still tell what they want to say. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Sometimes your heart just knows these things. She turned to look up at the sky, a few tears sliding past her smile. Like how I knew to reach out to you, even if I thought you were the Reaper. <laughs> Thank you for saving me, Basaraga. Anyone would have done the same. With a careful shuffle, I turned away. A dainty garden was no place for an armor-clad warrior to stomp about. I'll see you around, Irene. I took one last look at the vibrant garden before heading back to the ship. And now time for our epilogue, Vibrant Harvest. The morning had barely begun when Zeta came barreling over with a package addressed to me. It was stuffed full of fruit, which only confused her further. Huh? Aren't these Volca gold fruit? Lucky man! I heard their produce is all the rage these days! Whoops. Guess I hadn't told Zeta about Irene and her garden yet. Looks like the pantry is full. Help me carry these back to my room. Sure, but this is kind of a lot for a midnight snack. I figure being surrounded by a little more nature couldn't hurt. <laughs> Didn't take you for the crunchy type. Gonna grow your own orchard or what? She was joking, but honestly, it didn't sound like such a bad idea. Ever had fresh apple juice before? I'll make you some, as thanks for helping me carry everything. Wait a minute. You never put this much effort into treating me. Is this a trap? A skilled gardener taught me a trick or two. Never hurts to practice a new recipe. The vibrant fruit told me how well Irene was doing, much better than any letter could. Offering her garden a silent word of thanks, I was ready to enjoy its generous harvest. And there we go, another crewmate fully added to our ranks. Three more to go. Volker Gold Fruit. It's all the way down the bottom. This freshly picked apple gifted to Vasaraga grew in a garden he helped to save. Apples endemic to Volker were crossbred with a species from Glossgard, famous for its use in apple wine to create this delectable variant. They require a deft hand to grow, but the luster and flavor in the end is well worth the effort. I wonder actually like what trophies I've been picking up at this point in time, because obviously I've got a trophies for the characters. Etc. I've done like that ton of grinding, so there must be uh, quite a lot of stuff to get. Fortune Crystals M, some large ones, exceptional refinium. Anything stand out there? Silver Swell. D Damascus Inga is st quite stand out. That's one upgrade of a weapon without any materials. Uh, Amnesis, Silver Centrums, two of them. Some more vouchers, Rafale coins, which again, you just get tons of them from the EVF. And a damage cap 5 from something. Heliotrope Urn, is that something that's useful? 
You have to go to each tab to get the rewards, by the way? Wait, you're kidding me. I've not been doing that? So I've just been getting the rewards from one section and one section up, like, really, really? No, it's from all of them. Unless I haven't, you know, I'm pretty sure it's from all of them. Because I know, whenever, I, I think I went to them earlier and tried to go to them and there was just nothing there. I think if you go one, you get everyone. I always went to each one. I just, I just choose to select all and it selects all. I don't know. Yep. Alright, we must have some of these from our last I battles. Maybe there's something good in here. Comet's beard. Do you know what you found? Glass cannon five. That's what I found. Potent greens as well. If you come across any more curious, that seemed to be brand new for me. All right, I'm gonna go to the docks because I think I remember one more chest location back at Falka. I can't remember where they all are most of the time. Hey, even these guys are here if I want to get more mastery points. So I really need to start spending them on other characters now to build them up even further. So I'm thinking of being... I'm thinking of pretty much doing, like, Rackham. Because now that I've seen Slime Peed in action with a Rackham, which was kind of bonkers, uh, I need to be able to replicate that myself. <laughs> That's the way I'd put it. I totally need to be able to do that Myself. <laughs> he just stood there and destroyed everything. What am I looking for? I'm just looking for a way up at the moment. The place I need is... There's like a chest up on there. So you've got to come up from this side, I think it is. I think there's still one more chest I'm missing. There we go. Health 4, critical rate 4. I'll grab that, and then we'll grab ourselves a quest so and get to it. I don't know if I've got all of these gold chests yet, but uh, these special key chests, but we're as close as we can be. Let's put it that way. Maybe I can upgrade this last weapon for me as well at this point to get the bonus. I'll handle it. Yep. How about that? But it costs so much money! And I've got all 99 Mirage Munitions put on the Gizla now, so everything's looking pretty good that. there. Collection is now at 80%. Damage dealt plus 20% when attacking a foe's weak point. So now I just need, like, this weapon to get even more points, but we're getting ever so closer. Moving on. The goods. How much mastery points does it take to get to the bottom of Rackham's mastery tree? Just an interesting thought. Oh wow, I can't auto unlock down here? It's a point that... Oh, this is locked. Oh wow, it actually has prerequisites. I didn't know that was a thing. So you actually do have to go through it in some sort of order. <laughs> Well, I'll buy down a fairway, but now I've just realized I've made it worse for myself. I've made it worse for myself by an absolute mile. Come to view the request. Okay, well, I'll level up other characters in the future, but now we're back to the proud quest. Where do I go first? Melting Pot of Hostility has attack power 5 as a main thing. Skilled Assault, Concentrate Fire, Damage Cap. I'd rather have damage cap 5, but let's do it. It's been a suggested that Fondam's recent surge in volcanic activity stems from Infernodiles invading the lair of a resident dragon. Now, just because people don't live on the island doesn't mean Fright Flame Altar ought to fall into ruin. I'm sure brave Skyfarers can settle this matter. So is there two Infernodiles and a fire dragon by any chance? Yes. All right. See you. Ooh. Grind for that last weapon, Doozy. He'll find out eventually. 
Yeah, I mean, there's been quests delivered to us outside of forging as well, where I've got them in chests and stuff. So it's just a standard, just an ancient dragon. Very specifically, an ancient dragon. Okay. Uh, Rosetta? What's going on? Nice one. And that was just the warm up. I don't normally have people going down like that. That's a bit confusing. Oh, I did not get the gem bounce at all. You can hit me, but once I'm up here, I'm going to regain my health from hitting you. I think I'm going to heal up my friends at this rate. I've just realized why I did not want to set you up. Because once you start going up in the sky, that's going to be very annoying when the meteors start to fall. Oh, you you don't get the rings? Oh, Ancient Dragon doesn't get the rings. Poor Ancient Dragon. We can always count on you, can't we? I'll never let you down. Miss that link attack, though. One more. Dodge in, dodge out. Ancient Dragon's back down now. I'm going to switch target. That was mean. <laughs> Just turned on me nastily then. Help is on the way. Oh, my guys are dying. They're not one shot. That's not normal. I mean, breaking through things with the greatest of ease. Don't suck me away. I'm trying to kill some guy over here. thinking I could block that and just be bounced into a gap, but obviously not. Captain's down now as well. This rate, we're going to lose because of AI dying. Maybe I need to pay more attention to their help and heal them up in time. I jumped too much. <laughs> I could stop being sucked around. I could probably do a lot more damage to our enemies here. Who did I hit? I hit the wrong guy, didn't I? No! Yep, Dragon's going into mode now. Yeah. 
No one was nearby to join in there. I want to go fight Main Dragon, but I knew he was going to go up in the sky before I got to do anything else to him. Dragon down. We need to go harder. I've taken out the dragon. Your turn to kill one, guys. Grass is always greener. I can't aim a firearm to save my life. Hey, you better be dizzy. Spare me on twice. as well. Should be perfect. Okay, after people got knocked down at the start, it's actually been going fairly well. <laughs> and I'm just wheeling in. That dragon, though, hit me with a really fast fireball, and it seemed to one-shot me. The dragon trial. I wasn't ready for that. You're all mine. Nice. <laughs> You're all mine. Not bad. Damage cap. More damage cap fives. You're all mine. <sighs> Great hustle, guys. There's a place I can actually farm damage cap 5. Because I thought I could farm damage cap 5 in that quest. It turned out that I... Yeah. I was just lucky and got one randomly. <laughs> or at least there are more sigils than what it says in the drops. 
did not destroy all destructible parts. Bad me. But eh, what are you going to do? Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you get what you want. Tyranny 5 with Drain on it. That seems pretty good. Stamina with Drain on it. Eh. Doesn't seem bad to me. I've got it.